Second stop on the Christmas trip and we're on the coast at a place called Robe and this campsite's pretty quiet but apparently next week it's going to be full. We decided today we were going to take it easy, spend a bit of time around the van, go and do some shopping for some seafood. Robe's supposed to be really well known for crayfish and it's just as well we did because walked round the corner of the VW this morning and we got a flat tire. Last time we got a flat tire it happened about 11 o'clock in the morning when we were shopping near home. Finally got the vehicle back to the house at about nine o'clock that evening on the back of a tow truck. Um, so this time I've called out the equivalent of the AA and they're apparently not too far away um so hopefully we can get the wheel off no problem and get the tire around to a tire replace repair place nearby and get it fixed so we are just chilling out and my coffee is probably just about getting ready time to switch the milk on switch the coffee off and See you later. You can hear me for the wind. We're just getting the tire fixed. So we've come out of the road on the other side of the road. That's going to be the last bit. But not recommended on a windy day like today. Still. If you've got this far in the video you've already put up with a clip where the wind noise has obliterated my voice completely so I decided I'd better voice over this section because we were walking on the beach and the wind was just whipping through you could hardly hear me talk um, so what I was saying was just how nice Robe is and if the wind did drop it it would be a great place to spend time it's got lots of lovely little lakes where you can fish and kayak and paddleboard and the beaches and the cliff faces are really spectacular um, it's only about 1500 people officially but when you drive through the place it's a lot bigger than that and there's clearly a lot of holiday houses where people are coming I guess from Adelaide which is about three three and a half hours away um, so for a lot of the year it's really quiet but then I guess you'll get to Christmas next week and it'll be heaving with people so I just hope they um, hope they get better weather than we're getting as you can see Vass is dressed for the Australian summer yes. <laughs> okay see you later if you manage to hear any of that So we've just popped off the back of the beach now and here's what I mean, all these empty houses, even the ones that have got the vehicles in, I think people have just left the vehicles here for when they're here. And this is quite a long way from the town centre as well, still lots of houses and where there's a gap you fill it with another house. This is a big house. I don't think somehow they're gonna get it finished in time to be here for Christmas. The tire has been fixed. So, to celebrate, we're gonna go and drive about an hour inland to a wine district called Kunawara. Go and check that out. Well, that was a pretty boring drive to get to this little village. What's it called? Panola. Panola. Which is at the start of the wine region. I'm having a coffee. And because it's Christmas, I'm having a very natural, healthy looking Christmas cupcake. And yeah, very boring drive, flat straight roads through 
countryside, no villages, no towns, nothing. This coffee place gets recommended. There's quite a few in this little village, but this one gets really recommended. The coffee's not bad actually, I have to say, but what is interesting is given that we're in the middle of nowhere, Vasi tells me that these trousers, pants in the middle are $300. <laughs> Who's coming here and buying trousers for three hundred dollars? Yeah, so okay, well, coffee and then the winery. Okay, here we are at Wynn's Kunawara Estate, and this is the only vineyard that I really know of in Kunawara. And I think I even had some of this wine back in the UK 30 years ago. So it's going to be interesting to get in there and see just how long they've been going for. Where are we going? Left or right? Let's go. Agapanthus. And lavender. Must be Christmas. Okay, let's go and check it out. Yeah, it's a pretty nice tasting room. So, this is the typical soil that they've got here. So they call this top layer, the red soil, they call it terra rossa. And then underneath that layer, we've got limestone. So I guess it would be a bit rude not to try some of the wine while we're here. So this label has been consistently the same all the time that I've known this wine. You might recognize it. Hate to think what the prices are. Considering that we pay about, on average, $15 a bottle for our wine. <laughs> and we've settled, on, we've settled on the wines that we like. Most of them are Spanish. Um, I suspect we're not gonna find anything that's in our price bracket in this place, but we can go and have a taste and see what they've got. No prices on these. Oh, do they? Where are the prices? Okay, what's this? Eighty dollars for this single vineyard. Two hundred and five. Two hundred and five. Oh, well, that's for a million. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, so this is eighty. Okay, we're into the wine tasting. So this is we're starting off with their, I guess their cheapest range, their everyday drinking range. Um, Pinot Grigio. Yeah, which is quite nice and fruity. So it's this one here. Okay, so we're getting to the peak end of the tasting now so the wine that Vaz is about to taste now is a single vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon 2021 and it's $80 a bottle and then oh let's see the reaction yeah, way better. <laughs> yeah, way better. Okay, worth every cent. And then this one here is a very limited release. Uh, top of the range, Cabernet Sauvignon, $150 a bottle. Okay, put the camera down. I'm going to try. Right, the tasting is over. We succumbed. I think it averaged out at $30 a bottle for the six we got. So twice what we'd normally pay but it is Christmas